Hello friends, so very warm welcome. This is uh, Ishan on behalf of Edureka. So it's been a pretty good journey that we have been uh, doing these uh, sessions. So I'm going to take on to something known as Spring Framework for the day and I hope you will enjoy the session. So let's just start. So what's the agenda for the day? So guys, we're going to understand the Java frameworks for the day, right? And thereafter, we'll jump on to Spring Framework and we'll understand why we need Spring Framework and what exactly it is. Thereafter, we'll also understand the architectural uh, part of Spring Framework and we'll try to discuss few modules available in the Spring Framework. We'll also see what and all are the various features associated with the Spring Framework and we'll try to do one code on Spring Framework. So let's... Uh, start with the Java framework. So what exactly are the Java frameworks for us? So guys, we know uh, what exactly is Java, right? So it's a programming language which is supposed to help us solve a particular problem, right? And frameworks are nothing but they are the predefined APIs which we can embed in our programs, right? So let's see. So when as a developer we are writing, so we need to write a lot of code and many a time when the projects are in a deadline, so we are dependent on libraries to accomplish our projects in time, right? So these libraries are nothing but they are the frameworks or they are the APIs, right? So uh, as a developer, you shouldn't be bothered about, you know, writing a lot of code. So as of now, you can see, right? So, so much of code. So as a developer, we are pretty much tense about it. So need something that is fast and efficient. Now that's where we are gonna talk of Java frameworks or we're going to talk of the APIs, that's like application programming interfaces, which we need to put into our programs. So here's the solution. So I can use Java framework and using the Java frameworks, it's going to be very easy for us to achieve our targets and our deadlines in time, right? So uh, this fits with my code too, right? And whatever the frameworks you're going to choose. So we got a lot of frameworks, a lot of APIs available in Java now. So as per our requirement, we need to choose. For example, let's say that I want to search in PDA or I want to generate an Excel uh, report. So I need not write a Java IO API. So I, I need not to write my own Java IO code. So I can use the predefined libraries, right? So like uh, iText or write PDF, uh, you know, available libraries and I can do my task very easily. So the problem is solved, right? Whenever you start using the frameworks or when you start using the predefined code snippets in your programs. Now, what's the key benefit of having all these things, right? So my application speed and efficiency is also increased because the frameworks or the APIs, they are written in such a way that they are very well optimized. So we are looking on to a point now Right, so we started from a confused state and uh, we have reached to our potential state where we have to meet our project deadlines and all, right? So guys, the key target should be to use the frameworks as much as it is feasible and it is possible in our programming structures, right? You shouldn't be writing the code from the scratch. So in a smart world, if we are writing the programs from the scratch, right, it's not gonna help us, right? So always try to rely on the frameworks as possible as all right so Java frameworks principle. What exactly uh, the Java framework principle is all about, right? So it abides the Hollywood principle that is uh, don't call us. We will call you. So it's basically inversion of uh, control, which we are talking about. So uh, what exactly this key principle states like, so we got some class, right? For which we will create the object traditionally. So what is happening over here? So you create a class, you write down a class and then you create an object. But we are trying to talk of inversion of control, which says that do not worry about creating the object. So frameworks gonna create objects for you. You just configure the objects now, right? So let's say if we have a, a class A, which is having a dependency on some other classes like B and C, right? Or you can say it is the other way around, right? So if B and C are dependent on A or A is dependent on B and C. So how we can solve such problems? So Spring Framework is one of the key framework, right? Which focuses on inversion of control with the key principle as a dependency injection, right? So that's what we're going to discuss. So the traditional way of constructing the Java object is by the developer, but the Java framework principle or the spring framework principle will state that you don't worry about constructing the object. Objects will be constructed by the frameworks itself. 
all right so let's see various different java frameworks available in the market so guys we have a lot of frameworks available in the market right to a uh, name a few so hibernate struts and spring these are quite uh, famous frameworks available in the market so jsf play maven we got a lot of frameworks now right these are some of the most importantly and widely used frameworks in the industry so we are typically going to focus on spring framework so let's see that so what is spring framework and what exactly are its key features so let's now switch on to that so guys spring has been available on source code and it's available since january 2003 so it's basically an open source project and it was introduced by the guy rod johnson if you can see this guy right so the first version was released in the february 2003 and uh, so till that right so spring is available as in open source community you can always uh, browse the spring.org and you can browse to its apis you can browse to its documentation and you can learn a lot so over the passage of years right so we got 4.3 as in the latest version in 2016 right so this is widely used uh, version in the spring framework let's now understand the definition of the spring framework so spring is one complete and a modular framework for developing the enterprise applications in java right so guys when we talk of spring as a framework right it's a java framework but it is an enterprise edition java framework so what is meant by this term enterprise edition right so whenever we are writing the applications for the enterprises let's take an example of an enterprise so amazon is an enterprise now right google is an enterprise so when we are supposed to solve the problems associated with the enterprises we use the spring framework all right so spring framework can be used for all the layer implementations for a real time application right so when i am talking about the layer so let's try to keep it very simple let's say model view controller architecture right so we got a spring mvc as a design pattern which you can use to completely construct all the layers in your application so spring can be used for the development of particular layer as well so if you are not uh, interested in writing all the code in your spring framework you can also write few of the layer codes let's see some features associated with the spring framework the first thing it is open source right so it means that you can anytime have an access to the code and you can manipulate it and you can use it as in your own domain right so let's say i want to write a hospital management system on an enterprise level right and i need to use the spring framework so i can manipulate the framework and i can try to manipulate the apis which fits into my key domain itself so we got comprehensive tools available in our spring framework right it's lightweight when we talk of uh, the memory part right so it's very much relevant in solving the problems because it follows the design patterns and it effectively solve all the problems which we face in our enterprise edition of java so we typically say that spring framework is basically a framework of frameworks now why framework of frameworks because you can use lot of frameworks within the spring framework itself for an instance if you want to do object relationship mapping using hibernate so hibernate can be integrated or it is already there it's already there so we got the api through which we can directly access hibernate right so that's why we say it's basically framework of frameworks so uh, it avails array of resources so we got lot of resources starting from the very start let's say i want to implement security in my application or i want to implement something known as a model view controller or any other thing guys right so it's basically an array of resources so you can avail lot of features within the spring framework itself even the support like unit testing is also available in the spring framework itself all right so why we need to use spring framework i think the previous discussed features they are quite relevant that why we should be using spring framework but let's try to understand it in more detail so guys uh, these are the relevant usages across the industry right so we got different different frameworks available in the market but if you can see the spring mvc so it's outshining all the other frameworks in the market industry right so it means that it is industrially adopted and it is quite you know robust and all the industry all the companies they love development in spring framework and it is really popular now there are reasons that why it is so popular so it's simple now so if you talk of uh, the simplicity level so there are three basically main reasons out here now the simplicity is the first level right the writing of code is very easy in the spring framework right because here you are trying to configure the things and you are not trying to write the major portion of your code you are you are trying to configure the things then we got testability 
right and a loose coupling so these are some of the other key concerns and uh, let's now discuss them one by one so when i talk of simplicity so here you are always focused on writing your business objects as in pojo or model or beans right so what is pojo pojo is plain old java object so you are supposed to write your java object definition in the form of class in your programs right so it's pojo or poji so when i talking about plain old java object in a similar way we got interfaces now right so you can also write interfaces which will help us to get to our definitions to be implemented by us then we got something known as testability so spring framework is already having the testing layers available for example we got j unit already integrated so you can always perform a unit test or an integration test as per your requirement right so this is uh, something where we can write our own test cases and we can test our own code right so this is one also great feature which is available in the spring framework then we got loose coupling so here we are trying to understand that spring objects are loosely coupled now uh, for this first of all we must understand what is meant by the term coupling and what is uh, this loose coupling all about right so consider that you got a class uh, rider right and we got a bike so uh, this bike over here the reference to the bike object is basically initialized in the set bike method right so we got this interface bike available and we have a start method so we got various classes like honda bajaj or yamaha right so which can implement the interface bike and they will have a method like start now right and we can any time at run time set the bike to either be honda or bajaj or yamaha so run time polymorphic concept over here is implemented in a very beautiful way and it ultimately takes us to something known as loosely coupled environment so let's try to uh, discuss this as one example that how loosely coupled concept comes into action let's say i got one class as in rider correct and we got one more class as in bike now if rider has a reference to bike and i am going to create one constructor for the rider where i am going to create an object of bike right so object of bike is constructed when object of rider shall be constructed now that is uh, the true reality over here so if i am trying to say that i will come up in the main so if i am trying to create the object of rider over here so when i am creating the object of rider as of now so the moment the rider constructor will be executed your bike object will be constructed it means that there exist a dependency of your bike object construction on the rider object construction right so this is like a high in coupling so we got a high coupling over here now i need to reduce it in order to reduce it what i will do i will just come down and i will create one function like set bike and i will write the reference over here in this fashion right so i'm going to say this dot b assign b so it means that now you don't do the concept out here so rather than you create the object over here in the main now the construction of bike object is not dependent on the constructor of the rider right so that's one key concern over here so what i will do i will just say r dot set the bike to be b right so this is where we are trying to reduce coupling right and i will say that it is low coupling so guys this is where we will be reducing the coupling so when i am talking of the spring framework so spring framework will focus on always writing the code so that it is loosely coupled right so loose coupling concept with the runtime polymorphism it brings a charm in your code as in design pattern so what exactly is the ecosystem of the spring framework so guys we got a web layer right and we got a common layer service layer and a data layer so these are the different layers available in the spring framework ecosystem so uh we got the web layer right and it's basically the spring io platform right and there after we got a common layer where we do some uh, basic operation as in spring boot right and there after we got service layers and the data layers available right as in the spring xt and the other uh, you know components available in the spring framework right so this is like uh, the entire spring framework ecosystem 
how the spring framework's gonna come up and uh, interact and it is available in various modules available so let's see the architectural part of the spring framework so guys in the architectural part of the spring framework we got the base layer as the testing layer available right so it's a layered architecture now so spring architecture is a layered architecture so the testing layer is basically uh, focusing on the j unit part right so where we can write the unit testing then we got the core container so core container of the spring framework includes beans core context and spring expression language so this is the major and the main layer of your spring framework right so here we got inversion of control and dependency injection which is used in the upper layers even right and this forms the core part of your spring framework so on top of core container we got aop aspects instrumentation and messaging so aop is basically aspect oriented programming so with the aspect oriented programming we try to focus on cross cutting concerns so what is meant by this uh, term cross cutting concern cross cutting concern is a concern which is a kind of a security now so security has to be taken care in all the modules whenever you are writing the project right so aspect oriented programming helps us in implementing the cross cutting concerns now there after we got data access integration layer with the help of which we will be able to access our a database is right or you can say where we got our data sets available we got a web container over here where we can write the spring mvc web application right so we can have servlets then portlets which are the stand alone applications over the web interfaces itself so let's see the modules so the spring module basically it contains a lot of features and they are quite well organized and we got somewhere around 20 modules available right so the modules are grouped up and they are based on their few of the features as in the following right so as in the layered architecture we discussed so in a similar way we got these frameworks available so we got core container data access or integration right so you can access the data sets or uh, you can uh, have integrations with the frameworks like hibernate or so so core container will be the one which is the basic functionality so using the web layer or the web apis we can write the web mvc code then aspect oriented programming the way we got object oriented programming in a similar way we got aspect oriented programming so here we are trying to fulfill the cross cutting concerns then we got instrumentation and the testing layers let's talk about the modules one by one so when we are talking about the core part of the spring framework so we got a core container which focuses on dependency injection and inversion of control so the core layer provides the fundamental parts for the framework so these are the base of the spring framework now right so we got something known as beans context and spring expression language so these are the three important uh, key concerns right so guys beans are nothing but uh, they are the java objects which are constructed by the spring framework so you need to configure them then we got context it's an implementation of the beans itself right so it supports internationalization for example ejb jms or uh, remote apis if you want to come up with that then spring expression language is an expression language with the help of which we can uh, write programs even the data access modules of the spring framework will be able to access the data sets right so if you have the data available in the database let's talk about we got an oracle as a database right and we need to interact with the oracle and we can do so very easily with the spring framework so we got a jdbc layer we got orm layer so that's like these are all integration layers so orm is like object relationship mapping for example the hibernate so we got this integration layers which we can use then we got basically an object to xml mappings available then java messaging services are available then transaction management is also available right so if you are going to fire a transaction so commit and roll back all all these support so are available within your data access module itself so guys over the web layer we are trying to understand something known as a model view controller based web application right so the main uh, industrial usage over the web is web mvc module right so that's like uh, one of uh, the major modules which is quite readily used in the spring framework and it is industrially accepted so we got something known as web oriented features right we got portlets and sockets so portlets are nothing but they are the stand alone applications which are running in a web application right and there after we got uh, web sockets in order to come up with a two way communication so the few miscellaneous modules which are available in the spring framework includes aop 
right so aop is where you are going to fulfill the cross cutting concerns then we got instrumenting where we provide the class instrumentation support and class loader implementation we got aspects right so aspects are nothing but it provides the integrations with the aspect j and aspect j is something where we gonna fulfill the cross cutting concerns exactly where then we got uh, messages right and the testing layer so guys in case you want to come up with the unit testing so we got uh, support with the help of components like j unit or test ng so these are again the framework so that's why we call uh, spring framework as a framework of frameworks now let us understand how the spring framework will flow so guys the very first component in the spring framework is inversion of control right so we need to uh, come up slowly and slowly so that we can reach up to the end point so the first component is inversion of control let's see that so what exactly is the inversion of control so traditionally when we are writing the program so we will create the object right so that's like uh, you come up and you create the object so once the object is constructed right so we need to uh, wire them together so let's say we got multiple objects now and they have a dependency in between let's take our previous example as in a bike and rider example right so rider will have a bike so now we need to uh, you know fulfill this dependency somehow so we need to configure them in spring framework what we do we configure them and thereafter so whole management of the life cycle of the objects is taken care by the spring framework itself so we don't worry on that part so guys we'll try to code this flow and understand that how this uh, flow will exactly work all right so what and all uh, are the other concerns related with the ioc container so guys the spring ioc container by using the java pojo classes and configuration metadata produces a fully configured and an executable system or an application right so what we are trying to say is that you come up with the pojo class you write the pojo class and you provide the metadata in the form of some xml configuration you give it to the spring framework or the spring container and it will automatically give us the objects which we can use directly in our application or you can say we got a ready to use application itself so uh, let's see what exactly are the ioc containers so we got two different apis which are the ioc containers in the spring framework one is the bean factory other one is the application context so bean factory is basically an interface and application context is an implementation of bean factory itself so it is always better to come up and use application context so what happens over here these containers will basically load the xml files and thereafter they gonna construct the objects for us so we can also do by constructing by writing the annotations in our pojo classes itself if you want to skip xml you can come up with the annotational model so that is also supported now after the inversion of control we got dependency injection now dependency injection is all about when we have dependency in our code right so spring framework uh, has this di technique where we can remove the dependency from our code right so it's gonna make our application quite easy and manage to use and most importantly our programming code becomes loosely coupled right so that's the key important point which we need to take care even when we are writing the code examples all right so how this dependency injection is taken care by the spring framework so in the spring framework we got by constructor and by setter method so these are the two different techniques right by which the dependency injection is resolved right so we got a constructor arg and a property as key tags which can help us to resolve this dependency injection then next is the aop that's like aspect oriented programming so aspect oriented programming is basically where we need to implement cross cutting concerns right so i'll just try to take up one example of a cross cutting concern right so consider that we logged on to amazon and we we want to look on to a product right so i search for an iphone so the moment i started searching the iphone and i'm browsing the different different iphones in the same category that's like apple iphone so amazon will record from what time i started surfing the iphones and what time i left surfing the iphone so based on that amazon can give me some promotional offers or i can get some you know emails or i can get some advertisements from the amazon which will say that you must purchase this iphone right so logging now logging is also a kind of a cross cutting concern to implement such cross cutting concerns we can use aspect oriented programming in the spring framework so it gives us lot of other things right 
so as in the number one it's going to provide the modularity then aop will break the program into the distinct parts called concerns it also increases the modularity right when we write these cross cutting concerns and a cross cutting concern is a concern which can affect the entire application right for example security is one of the major cross cutting concerns right so we must be implementing them in a proper and in a regular way all right so uh, have a look guys uh, so in a cross cutting concern so if we have a different different modules and if we got couple of layers for example model view and controller so we need to implement these cross cutting concerns in every module and in every stage right let's say security so if i am writing a very basic code and i am trying to come up with the last level of my code i need to make sure and i need to ensure that security always remains so the last component or the last important concern which we have to discuss over here is a model view controller as in the spring framework right so guys uh, what happens over here when we are writing any enterprise application or a web application or if you try to write any software product right so model view controller is one design pattern so in this design pattern what happens the user will send a request over the presentation layer right so this request can be on to a presentation layer that's like a user interface so it is typically a view right so request will go from the view to the controller and controller is that guy which will process the request from the client or from the user right so typically the client over here is acting as a browser now correct so let us try to understand if i'm going to search an iphone in the amazon right so when the amazon website is open it's the presentation layer we call it a view when i'm searching the iphone and when i click on the search so this request goes to a controller which will process from the data set so model represents the data set over here right so we'll get the data from the data set into the controller right and controller can give it back to the view and this can be sent back as a response to the user so model view controller as a design pattern so what we need to focus we need to write the model separately controller separately and view separately so spring mvc as a complete uh, one package helps us to write minimal of code because it's all uh, you know modeled as a framework itself for us right so you need to write minimal code and you just need to write your own business logics and everything else will be taken care by the spring mvc flow all right so let's summarize the entire part so guys we got java frameworks we got spring framework why spring frameworks the architectural part of the spring frameworks what are various modules available in the spring framework and few of the spring features which we have discussed right so now let's try to uh, come down and see one snippet over the spring framework right so i'm going to write one java application so let's try to write one java application and uh, let's see how we can come up with our spring framework example so let's say it's one spring edureka demo and i'm going to finish the project so here we are with the spring edureka demo now what i am going to do over here is i am going to write one new class and i am going to write the class name as employee so let's try to take one package as co.edureka and let's finish it off now i want this employee class should be a pojo class so i'm going to write one employee id let's uh, write one employee name and let's also try to write some employee salary so if you want to come up you can come up with some more data right so these are the attributes for my object which i have mentioned in our class right and thereafter i need to define constructors getters and setters to come up with the pojo structure right so let's say right click source generate constructor using fields so this is one constructor along with all the fields so i am also going to construct one constructor as in a default one so let's try to write one default constructor i got uh, one constructor with all the inputs and the lastly i'm going to do it as generate getters and setters let's select all so here we are with the getters and setters and now i'm also going to write one two string method so let's generate one two string method so this is one structure which is representing uh, pojo or 
model or beam, right? So you call it as a POJO or a model or a beam structure, right? So once I am done with this, what I will do next is that I'll write one client class. So I'm going to write one class as in client along with the main map, right? So this is my main method. So what is the traditional way as a developer, how I will construct the objects, right? So I will say employee as in a new employee, right? And thereafter, I'll say e dot set of EID as 101 e dot set of employee name as in, let's say, John Watson. And finally, I will set a salary, let's say 30,000, right? So this is the traditional way how you will construct an object. So other than that, all right, so I think uh, I did something wrong. All right, so I, I have uh, taken the salary as in string. So guys, uh, let me uh, change it to the integer part. Just a moment. So here we are done. Now I will just say CISO and I will try to print the E. So what I will get as in response, I will be getting the response as in the details of the employee. Now this is my traditional way how we construct the objects in Java. Let's try to follow the spring framework and let's see how we can come up with inversion of control right so i'm gonna write something known as inversion of control right so ioc as in spring framework so let's see how we can do that to do that i'll follow certain steps the step number one will be to add jar files for core i'll just say for spring core right so let's add jar files for spring core right number two configure Java object in an XML file, right? And number three, use Spring container, Spring IOC container. So when we are saying IOC container, for example, Bean Factory or application context to get the objects constructed by them so we now need to follow these three simple steps to perform the first fundamental that's like inversion of control we add the jar files for spring core and thereafter we're going to configure the java objects in an xml file and finally we'll use the spring ioc container for example bean factory or application context so that we can get the objects constructed by the spring container itself right so let's see how we can do that so step number one I'm going to configure uh, my project with the build path with the spring core jar file. So I'm going to say build path, configure the build path. And in my build path configuration, I'm going to add the external jars under the libraries. So here we are with the spring jar. So I already have my core jars available over here, right? So you can download it over the web. So I'm just going to link these jar files with my project structure and let's say apply and OK. So here we are with the spring core jar files available in my project, right? So once I'm done with this, so the next part is to come up with one XML configuration file. So let me take up to that. So just a moment. So I'll just copy one of the employee bean dot XML file. So I have this XML file and I'm going to copy it in my SRC directory. If you will see, I'm not copying it to my package. I'm copying it into the SRC directory out here, right? So once we are done uh, with the copying of this XML file, let's try to open and see the structure of this XML file now. So the structure of the XML file says that it's basically one root tag known as beans with the tag known as beans and the property. So what is this bean ID all about? So ID can be any name of your choice. For example, I'm going to say this is emp1 and the class over here goes like co dot edureka dot employee the property is uh, the attribute names available in your pojo structure eid e name and e salary right so i got eid so for my eid the value goes like one or two right and similarly i got e name and e salary so in lower case i think let me just cross check right so it's all in lower case so e name goes like Jenny and e salary goes like let's say 50,000 
so this is my one of the b so i can declare as many as uh, object configurations over here right so let's try to come up with some m2 and let's say this is 103 this is jack with 46 right so these are the two configurations which i have done in the xml file so the first thing was to link the jar file second thing was to configure the concept of my objects as in key value pairs so key are attribute names and the value is the exact value which the object will hold for its attribute so this is the state of an object now right over here now what is next so the next part is to use the spring container in my client class so use the spring ioc container so i'm gonna use the application context out here right so let's see how we can use the application context so you say application context if you can see over here so application context context as in a new class path xml application context and you mention over here employee bean dot xml so guys this name of the file can be any name of your choice right you are free to use any name but make sure that this employee bean dot xml file is available under the src directory right so here we got employee bean dot xml file right and that too within the application context so now i will say employee even as in context dot get the bean you mention as m1 so what we are doing, we are using the API known as getBean. So this M1, we gave it in our XML configuration, right? So over here, I'll just uh, downcast it as in employee because it's going to return me the object, right? So we need to uh, downcast. Or the other way of uh, using the same guy is like you say M2 as in context.getTheB, M2, and you just mention the class over here like this. And now let's say CISO E1 and CISO of E2, right? So here I'm just going to put a delimiter spring IOC in action, right? So this is one delimiter. Let's run the code and see the output. So guys, now we can see the traditional way of retrieving the objects was you construct the objects, you set the data, right? And the spring framework says that you don't create the objects you use the objects in your program and now what is the beauty about this xml file coming into over here so many times we'll be confused right so why we are doing all these stupid stuff right the reason is that xml over here can be changed anytime right and you need not to worry about changing the source code so it's not the kind of a source code right so xml file is not a source code which will be compiled into some binary and then binary will be processed by JVM. So JVM is processing the Java files as in the byte codes. So this XML file is not a part of your source, right? So it's gonna be modified at any time, whenever and as required by us, right? So here the configuration goes in the XML file. So the real implementation of the same inversion of control can be seen in the Android, right? So let me, uh, you know, run down with one example over here. So where this inversion of control fits into. So let's see that part. So how the Spring Framework is related to the Android, let's try to come up and uh, understand this part. So it's a very beautiful concept, the inversion of control, which we have demonstrated over here, right? So let me try to open any of the applications over here. All right, so let the system gets uh, loaded for us so even though it's exactly you know out of our context but it's just for the reference purpose right so we'll now see that there is something known as uh, these layout files which are all the xml files if you can see over here so these are different xml files and in these xml files i can see that uh, we got some uh, you know configurations done out here right so these are the properties now. So what is the menu? It's a drawer menu, right? So what is the weight? What is the height? So for every, you know, Android UI part, so we got this configuration available in the XML file, right? So anytime user can actually come down and change the XML file structure, so the code will not be affected. So what Android will do, Android will read these XML files and it's gonna construct the Java objects. It's inversion of control, which is available. So in my code, if you can see over here, 
right? So the UI is exactly uh, dependent. If you can see the same XML file structures, right? And we are trying to say find view by ID. So let's try to understand this. So here you can see the toolbar coming up, right? So as in some toolbar, and here we are trying to say find view by ID as in toolbar. So it's a very much similar story as in we are trying to say context dot get bean, right? So the API standards are different. So guys, this is what we got as in Spring IOC, right? And the introduction to the Spring framework. So thank you very much. I hope you have enjoyed the session. So for more information, you can always visit our website. Once again, guys, this is Ishan on behalf of Edureka. Thank you very much for watching this session. Once again, thank you very much. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply to them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to our Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning.